In the chef world, he's a rock star. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton, and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with one of New York City's IT chefs, David Chang. For those of us not lucky enough to be located in New York City, why don't you tell us about the idea behind your restaurants? We are uh, going to have five restaurants in New York City. Uh, most of them are located in the East Village. They're small, quirky, places that we're just trying to serve really good food. Tell us more about the cookbook. How did you guys get together to write it? Peter used to work for the New York Times and I met him through Mark Bittman. Peter was the critic, reviewed us for his 25 and under column. He came in one Sunday for lunch and Bittman introduced him. And Bittman's both like our adopted father in New York City. He writes the minimalist column in the dining section and that's how we got to know each other. And um, I, oh yeah, we met, we started seeing each other at concerts. Now, are these recipes that any at-home chef could undertake, do you think? We certainly didn't make it cook in 30 minutes and you're done. Being a home cook is a lot of it's being, uh, making mistakes. So, uh, that's how we developed the recipes. Can you explain to me the idea that authenticity is overrated? Any type of country that's trying to represent or replicate a cuisine from another country, it's not really authentic. What's authentic? You're not using authentic workers, you're not using the water. People pursue authenticity so much to the point that they forget, is the food delicious? I saw that you guys have a list of five things you should never buy. Can you uh, give us a hint as to what these are? We get a lot of flack at the restaurant because we're not, I'm not a big fan of tongs in the kitchen. Truffle oil is another, I hate truffle oil. And summer truffles I think are, gar are garbage. Commodity meats and pork, wasabi mashed potatoes. What is the most important part of the cooking process to you? Respecting the ingredient, and it's so cliche, but knowing where it came from and following it through to the final process. That's something that drew me to cooking, where you could actually work something in the beginning of the day and then have instant gratification by seeing it processed and processed and uh, served to the customer by the end of the day. That's why we have a lot of our cooks go to farms and stuff like that. When they see like an animal died, they're gonna think twice about overcooking it. They're gonna, they're gonna try to make it as beautiful and as delicious as possible and, and respect the, the life that was taken, the farmer that raised it, and you know, the cost that was involved in all of it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much.